So my parents just gave me this camera. This is from my childhood, expired in 2003. Oh my gosh, that was 20 years ago this year. And I'm gonna send this off to get developed, but I wanted to share where I get my film even developed in the first place. And that is the dark room. Let's get into it. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. Yeah, so this is 20 years old. <laughs> and there's still a few photos left on it. I'm gonna try and take some quick photos with these later. I wanted to talk about where I send my photos to be developed. I do shoot some film. I don't shoot a ton and I don't shoot it often just because of the expense. It's really, really expensive. It's really fun to shoot with, don't get me wrong. It's just another added expense on top of instant photography, which this channel is mostly known for. <laughs> and yeah, instant photography is really expensive. But when I received that, it reminded me of this disposable camera that I picked up and shot while in New York City during 2020, mid-pandemic. So I set this off to be developed. Now you may be asking yourself, well, if you send it off, how do you still have it? <laughs> I just opened it up, pulled the film out, and sent the film canister by itself and kept this, because I actually kind of want to reuse this and take more photos with it. I think it'd be kind of fun. That's a whole other topic, another video maybe down the line. So I don't develop my own film. I don't shoot it off enough to justify having that set up and everything. So what I do is I use a service and that is the Dark Room or the Dark Room Lab. And they do a wide variety of different film types. They do the most common ones, medium format 120, 35 millimeter film, disposable slash single use cameras. And it starts at $12 for developing, which isn't too bad. However, if you shot several rolls, well, that's gonna be $12 per roll. So yeah, I mean, it can add up really, really quick. One really cool thing about their services, you have a couple different ways that you can go about sending them the film and you don't actually have to pay up front to get the film to them. You can go online and print out a pre-made label and just send your film off and then get it developed that way. Or you can actually request a mailer. It has everything you need inside this little bag, paper, filling out what you want done. It's pretty cool and you don't have to pay for the shipping. You do have to pay for the shipping back though because you do get your negatives returned to you. But you also get a digital scan of each photo that you had developed and that is stored on their server. I think you have a few months before you, they will then disappear. But another really cool thing that they offer is they have their own app and it's just for viewing your photos. You download the app and then you can see your photos, download them to your phone and then maybe wait for the negatives to come back and if you wanna scan them yourself, whatever you wanna do. You can also request them to be put on CDs or USB drives. You do have to pay a little extra for higher resolution scans. There's different levels that you can choose from for a higher resolution for more you know, DPI and clarity. For point and shoot cameras, I don't really pay for the upgrade of those. Now, if you're gonna be shooting on the medium format type thing with a nice lens, nice glass and all that, then yeah, it's worth it definitely to pay that little extra charge for scanning for those higher resolutions. But if you do your own scanning, then you don't even have to worry about it. It's nice to be able to preview your photos before you have them. If you wanna do a quick like Instagram post or share, you're able to do that right away without even having to get your uh, negatives returned to you. So that's still really cool. Now, worth noting, you can only send so many at a time in one prepaid envelope and you can only send one disposable slash single use camera at a time. And that's also another reason why I wanted to open this up. Cause I had like three other canisters to send. I just opened it up and put it all into one. So that's a little hack there for you. And I'll take a quick look at some of the photos from this. Cause again, it's from 2020 and it was technically expired film. Cause when I bought this, it was expired. Didn't pay attention. Yeah, it expired May of 2020. I bought this in like June of 2020. So it was already already expired when I was shooting it, but they still came out really good. I mean, I've never been to New York. <laughs> this was the first time I ever got to go there, downtown Manhattan. There was no people there really at all. I mean, it was peak pandemic. Everyone was inside quarantine, but it was, so I snapped some photos to kind of show like an empty New York. I mean, there were still some people walking around, but as you can see from some of these photos, like I'm pretty sure, even though I've never been there before, but I'm pretty sure the streets don't look like this on a regular basis. I mean, I went down to Times Square and there, there was like nobody there. 
it was pretty much vacant ghost land. I didn't get any photos, unfortunately. It was too late in the day for photos and I was I was tired at that point, I remember. Definitely checked out the uh, Ghostbusters firehouse though. <laughs> that was pretty fun. And took a quick, quick stroll over the Brooklyn Bridge. And there's a few other photos on here that were from random times of who knows when. The classic Who Song and Larry sign. Any uh, longtime viewer of the channel knows that's usually my testing sign. <laughs> I take photos of that all the time. It's a really good restaurant though. Highly recommend it if you're ever in the Vancouver, Washington area. Check it out. Really good food. There's my boy Paco here in the studio. I think I had just moved in at that time. And then some random shots around the studio. And what my desk looks like on a typical day. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to capture that. So if you ever see my office on video at some time and it looks clean, just know I cleaned that for that video. Don't let me fool you. I've never had a single problem with the dark room and for the cost and everything, I feel that they're probably the best option. If you just want to get started, obviously doing this yourself would be the cheapest. However, the initial cost into it is kind of high to get the stuff that you need, but then long term it would be cheaper, especially if you're shooting a lot of film. If you're only shooting, you know, a handful of film every few months or something like that, it's cheap. Just send it off. Just send it off to have done and yeah, save yourself the headache later. But I have some trips coming up and I'm hoping to bring this and shoot some uh, more medium format because I do have a few rolls left of this Portrait 400 120 film. It is expired now. I I bought it in like 2021 and expired uh, July of last year. So I need to shoot it. I mean, it's been sitting in my fridge, so we're, we're fine. <laughs> but I want to get a shot and shooting with this Yashica D, it's really really fun experience. I did a video on this years ago. If you want to check that out, shooting my first ever roll of film. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I grew up shooting 35 millimeter, but this is like the first time I ever like did something outside of a point and shoot on film because this is all point and shoot disposable type cameras. But yeah, this was the first time I ever used a kind of a camera with manual control and all that. It was really fun. If you wanna check it out, it'll be linked in the description below. What do you use for your film development? Do you do it yourself? Do you send it off to somebody? Let me know in the comments below. Let's chat. Stay tuned for this video because I'm really curious to see what childhood photos are on here. <laughs> I think, whew, who knows what we'll see. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this has helped. I'll see you in the next one. Now, get out there, make some art.